My name is Anant Polony. I'm from San Francisco, California. So the image you're looking at is a diffraction pattern, uh, which is a fancy way of saying the effect of shining a laser light or coherent light at a very, very small object. The light from the laser interacts with the very small object, and instead of just bouncing off, the small object actually affects the laser light and causes it to interfere with itself. This image uh, is created by shining a laser at a small liquid crystal device, much like a computer monitor that you would have connected to your computer every day. This research hopes to create a microscope that will allow us to see very fast and very small uh, objects, such as a virus infecting a cell, or the growth of concrete or magnetic processes happening inside of material. Uh, my name is Ronan Daly and I'm from Dublin in Ireland. My name is uh, Janis Mastois, I'm from Greece. We're looking really closely at a reflective part of a jacket. So it's just a normal coat that we wear every day and just a little bit of a reflective coating that we can see and then we can see a little bit of the fibres next to it as well. Uh, we took it with a microscope called an electron microscope, a scanning electron microscope and we coated it with a little bit of metal and then put it into that machine and we were able to magnify it and take an image. Uh, the wider project is about uh, the dyeing processes uh, during the manufacturing of uh, clothes. Uh, the thing I'm trying to do is to explore how the, the microstructure of the fibre changes through the washing cycles and how this affects the vibrancy of the, of the clothes. Okay, so this is uh, Euston Station on the Northern Line on the Westbound Carriageway and um, engineering hours are between 1am and some other unearthly hour in the morning and um, it's the only time that you get to maintain the, the tunnels and the track so you want to streamline that as much as possible. You also have to manually take, a, take down to the tunnel everything that you need, so all your tools and all your materials. So the problem with that is that if stuff is over-engineered you have to carry down manually a lot more bulky, bulky materials. So um, one of the things we're trying to do is streamline the design by uh, understanding the tunnel design. So here's a team of researchers who are conducting a 3D laser scan um, that fires off a, a laser in 360 degrees and it records the um, three-dimensional geometry of an object, in this case, the tunnel. Um, so that will allow a, a model to be created of that exact situation, which can then be validated against our analysis. So the images of a bone cell that has attached itself uh, to a very thin metal fibre and has subsequently spread across and attached itself to another metal fibre. So the the main aim of the research was uh, the metal fibres are acting as an in vitro model of the surface of a hip implant and the bone is there to simulate the environment which the hip implant is going into. Uh, so we covered the model in a protein called fibrin and uh, looked at the effect it had on the initial sort of inflammation process, so that initial stage of uh, growth that cells go through whenever they're subjected to something like an implantation of a hip implant. Hopefully, you know, however many years down the line, this will lead to much shorter recovery times for patients of this specific hip implant. <laughs>